There's so many aspects to Trails of Cold Steel 3 that I, I don't even really know where to begin to touch on because do I cover just the story? Do I cover the gameplay mechanics? Do I cover the mini games? Do I cover, you know, how rich and alive the world is? There's just, it's honestly overwhelming to try and figure out how I'm going to start. But I am going to start and review this video. And there are a couple of things that I want to point out before I get started. One thing I know people are probably going to be curious about is do they need to play these two, Trails 1 and Trails 2? And let's go ahead and get this out of the way. No, you don't have to. Although I highly recommend you do play 1 and 2, as well as the Trails in the Sky series and uh, Zero no Kiseki as well, because I think if you play them all, you'll have a greater appreciation for the entire Trails world. Okay, so I know this video is running a little bit long with the intro, but I gotta just say this. The spoiler alert is, you need this game. And I'm gonna tell you why, once we get the video rolling. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And let me go ahead and introduce myself, because I'm supposed to do that and being rude. I'm sorry I'm being rude, but I'm Mikhail Casanova, Hawaii's favorite YouTuber and host of the number one podcast in the state of Hawaii, the Casanova Podcast. So, that being said, that out of the way, let's go ahead, like, share, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff you should do, and uh, let's get this video rolling. Let's start. So we're going to be reviewing The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 3. And you're probably wondering, where do I start? Is this game something I can just hop in? You know, because I know there's a promotional video that was put out before where it was said that you can just hop into this game. You don't have to have played one or two or the Trails in the Sky series or the Crossbell games to understand what's going on in this one. That is true to an extent. The reason I say it's true to an extent is because you can hop into this game. It does do a very, very comprehensive recap of Trails 1, Trails 2, and the entire world of Trails, which includes Trails in the Sky series as well as the Crossbell games, which the Crossbell games we really haven't gotten because I'm not sure why. But that is all covered which if you want to know more about there, there's like a whole encyclopedia about all the different characters, the story, the plot points, the world, different events, locations, different factions that are going on. There's a lot to cover. So in that sense, yes, you can jump into three without having played the others. I just highly recommend you go and read all that. And there's a lot you're gonna sit through. So get yourself an energy drink or a coffee, sit down and prepare to Get immersed for the next two or three hours to get caught up on the events that lead into three. Now where I say that three isn't a good point to jump in is because even if you do go through the recap route, and I think a lot of people will probably do a recap, there's a lot that you're going to just not get. Like there's also the layer of the familiarity and the relational bond that you'll have with the characters that won't be there if you just jump into three versus if you were to have just started with one and progress, you know, naturally. But long story being short, yes and no. But more so yes, you can jump into this with Trails of Cold Steel 3. Now Trails of Cold Steel 3, this story picks up with our main character, Reen Swarcer, who actually is voiced by one of my good friends, Sean Chiplock, who I previously interviewed on this channel if you want. Link to that is in one of these corners and down below. This is Sean Chiplock. The voice of Reen Schwarzer in Trails of Cold Steel, and you're listening to Casanova Podcast, the number one podcast in all of Hawaii, and perhaps one day, Erebonia. I also interviewed the voice of Kurt Vander, aka Joe Zija. So if you want to check that out, that's also down in the description below. But let's go ahead and get into the game because there's so much I need to cover. <sighs> okay. So basically, the start of Trails of Cold Steel 3 is picking up where Trails 2 left off. And, you know, there was a great civil war that happened. A lot went on, a lot of casualties, a lot of just... And, and this is the thing you need to understand if you're going to dive into the Trails world, especially the Trails of Cold Steel series, is that there's so much that is going on. From political intrigue, to character narratives, to relational dynamics, to different factions. There's absolutely so much going on, sometimes you're going to have to get a notepad and just start writing things down as a point of reference because it does focus on Reen Schwarzer. The reality is, there's so much else going on. If you played Trails 2, you'd know he gained the title of the Ashen Chevalier. To some, he's considered a hero. To others, he's considered 
you know, a villain. But that, again, is what happens when you have a political narrative for a story. The lines between good and evil, who is good, who is bad, that basically is based on what political faction that you're lined up with. And that's one of the things I like about this game is it really delves into the depths of what is right and wrong. It goes into the morality and just shows you the different sides and aspects of, yes, this is what happened in 2, this is what happened in the Civil War, but this is the result of what happened because of that said war. With starting the game off, you're starting off with a new Class 7. As you know, Reen Schwarzer is a graduate of Class 7, and now he's the lead teacher and instructor of Class 7. It consists of Kurt Vander and his classmates, which are all being instructed by none other than Reen Schwarzer, who's a former graduate. And it's really cool to see the dynamic of where he started in Trails 1 to where he is now in Trails 3 and where he's going to go. Because while his students do have an admiration and love for him, there's also a side of them, a side of him that they really don't like. They feel like he's a bit of a glory hound because he always shows up and saves the day. The thing is, it's not like he's trying to do that intentionally. He's also watching and observing to see if his students are capable of even, you know, defeating certain enemies that will pop up, and if not, then he's there with the rest of Class 7 from his time. Now when it comes to the gameplay, you could say that this is a traditional JRPG if you have not played a Trails title before. It is traditional, but it's also not traditional, because there are certain aspects. If the closest point of reference I can give you is if you've played any of the Grandia titles. It is so similar to the Grandia games, uh, you can just expect that you got the turn order, you got certain different things you can do, so like if you do certain attacks, you may either knock out an enemy entirely or stop them from being able to do certain things. Because certain attacks either have a cancel ability or they have certain, you know, buffs and debuffs. Like they'll buff you but debuff your enemy, which is really cool. And it is in the traditional sense of the turn-based battle format, but you also have the ability to move about the map. So the placement of your character on the map is very crucial because it's all about, and that's the key thing about this game, it's all about strategic placement of your character in relation to your enemy. Now some things will happen where you have certain enemies have a certain radius of attack, so if they were to hit, it goes within a certain radius, right? You also have that ability. Sometimes it's best to keep your party all together, but Honestly, more often than not, it's good to keep your party dispersed so that one attack doesn't just wreck everybody. Or vice versa. You know, your enemy, this also applies to your enemy as well. The combat system, you know, the way you can build up if you do, were to do regular attacks, you build up your CP to be able to do, you know, more devastating moves. It's the same thing that you'll find in Grandia, if that's a point of reference for you, which is what I'm using right now, so you'll understand that. It's so intricately layered. I, I could go on and on about the different things, such as, you know, the chain link attacks, or, you know, the arts, and the tech skills, there's just so much much. All I'm going to say is, if you start this game, just pay attention to everything because unlike other RPGs which, you know, may feed you information here and there, Trails and the Trail series in general makes it a point to teach you every little aspect of not only the game itself, but the combat. So if there's anything you're not truly understanding, the game is going to teach you how to do it. But that's also one of the things about this game. Information overload. Oh my god. There's so much that is thrown at you. Often sometimes it can come off as overwhelming. When you start the game, for the first couple of hours, you may run into about one or two battles, but you're going to be sitting through cutscene after cutscene after cutscene. And if you're someone who doesn't like to read, that may be a problem. Not a problem for me, but for some it may be. But there's so much thrown at you from mini games to the battle system to the the weapons and the equipment and the abilities and it's just, it can be overwhelming. But you stick with it. It's not that bad. For me. I can't speak for you. I hope it's not for you. But it's fun. It's a fun system. It's a very engaged type of system where it basically, it wants you to know how to play the game and play it effectively. All right, so let's talk about the graphics because I know a lot of you are probably wondering, does the game look good? You know, does it look next generation or current generation? And I'll say this, if your point of reference for starting the Trail series was one and two, the game looks 
better. Trail of Three looks better than both of these. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that this game was not designed with the PlayStation 3 in mind. It was actually designed with the PlayStation 4 in mind. So there, it's, you know, you can see where in the previous entries they had the restrictions of that console in mind, whereas in this one it's built from the ground up for the PlayStation 4. So graphics, they look good. They're not going to blow your mind, but they look good. And I like the fact that the characters emote certain ways. There's, there's a level of personality and emotion behind the characters and how they emote. So you're definitely going to enjoy that. So let's talk about the audio and the voice acting. So here's the thing. If you play any game that is a Nihon Falcom game, you already know the soundtrack is absolutely going to kill it. You cannot tell me the soundtrack does not sound perfect to you because everything from the battle theme, the overworld theme, everything that you're going to hear in this game just sounds absolutely fantastic. I've never played a Neon Falcon game that did not have an exceptional soundtrack. And this one doesn't disappoint. If you love the previous Trails titles or if you love the Ease titles, you're going to love the soundtrack in Trails of Gold Steel 3. Now when it comes to the voice acting, as I said, I'm friends with the voice actor for Reem Schwarzer, known as Sean Chiplock, and he does an outstanding job as Reem in this title. Like, you can tell the layers of complexity and depth that he put into his character coming from Trails 1 up to Trails 3. He's really, you can, he, the, the way he has evolved Ring from just mere voice acting is just truly exceptional. He's really brought Ring to life beyond just being a polygonal character on screen. You can relate to Ring, you can emote with Ring, and Sean just really brought him to life. The same thing with Joe Zija. He did a great job with Kurt Vander bringing Kurt to life. You know, these voice actors have been able to do phenomenal jobs and nothing but hats off to them. And, and their entire cast of voice actors for this title has been truly, truly magnificent. So we covered the gameplay, we covered the story to an extent. We covered the graphics, we covered the music, we covered the voice acting, so now it's time to wrap it all up, put a little bow on top of it, and make it look nice, and let you know, is this a game that you need to play, or you should buy this game, which is, I've already spoiled it and say that you should buy this game. I'm gonna go ahead and just say it, you should buy this game. Just, trails. I need you guys to get into the Trail series. I know we got Final Fantasy, we got Grandia, we got, you know, the Tales of series. We got so many great RPGs, but Trails is another one you need to dive into. And if there are things that you love about Final Fantasy and Persona, you're definitely gonna find all that and so much more in the Trail series. Trails of Cold Steel 3 is a great entry. If you wanna hop into it, it's definitely there. I think you guys would enjoy it. If you want to hop in at the earlier titles, definitely are there too. But you need to play this game because it's that simply amazing. And I got to give a special shout out and thank you to NIS America for providing me the review code to not only review and play this game, but just to enjoy the saga that's ongoing with Trails of Cold Steel. So thank you guys so much for allowing me to play and review this game. So this is the part of the video where I gotta ask, what are your thoughts? Do you have this game? Are you looking to pick this game up? Are you a fan of Nihon Falcom games in general? Anything, what is your perspective? I wanna know that, let's get the conversation going down below in the comment section, whichever way you sway. And uh, with that being said, that's it. That's the end of the video. That being said, I'm Mikhail Casanova, Hawaii's favorite YouTuber, host of the number one podcast in the city of Hawaii, the Casanova Podcast. I'm signing out. I hope you guys have a great one. I hope you pick up Trails of Cold Steel 3. And with that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Deuces wild, too sweet, be the elite. I'll see you in the next one.